Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hi, Roxana. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Thanks. And you? I'm doing good, too. Thank you for asking. I'm glad to hear that you're doing good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our final week of this module. My camera is off today to prevent any connection issues that we might have. So I'm going to keep my camera off uh, just in case we have any problems to avoid having any problems, better said. And while we wait for everyone to join, I'm just going to go ahead and start by sharing my screen as usual so that we can review the agenda. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Nice. Thank you so much for checking that. All righty. So. As I was mentioning, we have reached the final um, week of our module. You are finishing the second module of the pre-advanced level. So congratulations to you. We just have a couple more topics to cover. Today, we'll review the introduction video. We'll talk about world history and you will learn some history vocabulary and mainly we will be practicing pronunciation by doing a reading. That's this one. We'll talk about world history, specifically human history. So like the beginning of everything, right? The beginning of our race. Um, tomorrow we will be talking about the past, uh, past perfect, past continuous. It will be all about the past uh, also in Wednesday. I know that some people are already working on the final test. So congratulations if you already finished. Um, if you are here and you already finished, congratulations to you. Thank you so much for joining us, nevertheless. Um, and if you have not finished, that's okay. We will cover these topics. And on Thursday, on our official final day, we will do the final test review, just like we did with the midterm. Alrighty. So today, let's see, let's see, we are seven people right now. We have seven people. I see Bonnie, Katia, Maritza, Natalie, Rioberto, and Roxana. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being on time. And while we wait for everyone else to join, or for whoever wants to join, let me share my audio. This is the introduction video to section five. We have, uh, we are going to be covering the topic about world history. And we will start by watching this brief video and then talking a little bit more about uh, vocabulary for that, um, words that are used for that, the tense that we use, and then we will do our reading, all right? So let's go ahead and start by watching our introduction video. To sit, relax, and watch the last video with us. Feel free to take notes as you watch it. Finally from us, the virtual office for better or worse technology and globalization are creating startling changes in what it means to be on the job. Betsy Stark is tracking the new order of business and tonight begins our series, The Future of Work. Imagine a work world with no commute, no corporate headquarters, maybe no office in the physical world at all. For Bob Flavin, Janet Hoffman, and Joseph Jaffe, the future is already here. These days we do so much stuff by teleconferences and things um, that it doesn't matter where you are. Like 42% of IBM's 350,000 employees, Bob Flavin rarely comes into an IBM office. We don't care where and how you get your work done. We care that you get your work done. 
On the day we met him, he was collaborating with computer scientists in British Columbia and Beijing from the on-call room of his local ambulance corps, where he works as a volunteer. You are in 6031. The workforce at the Accenture management consulting firm is so mobile, not even the CEO has an office with his name on the door. There's no corporate headquarters. No. If you need a workspace, you reserve it like a hotel room, checking in and out at a kiosk. Having a big desk is a sign of status with lots of family photos and, uh, you know, and, and carpeting that's fluffy and nice. Is, uh, that is, is a vision of the past. Come on into the theater. In the future, more companies with scattered workforces and clients may do what the crayon marketing firm has done and make their headquarters in cyberspace. Here's our little rooftop. We had our holiday party here. Crayon's workers rarely meet in the physical world. I am uh, in Boston today. And I am on Long Island today. But their alter egos in the virtual world gather once a week. We're here in, uh, in our boardroom, and uh, you're here actually at the tail end of a status meeting. I never met Crayon's CEO in person. There you are. But we spent a couple of hours together in cyberspace. Our belief is that if we bring like minds together, no matter where they are in the world, we can actually create that connectedness as if we're actually here at the same place at the same time. If what matters is what you do, not where you are, who needs an office? Betsy Stark, ABC News, Crayonville in cyberspace. And, and tomorrow, imagine having summers off every summer. That is World News for this Monday. I'm Kate Snow. For Charles Gibson and all of us at ABC News, have a good evening. Good night. All right. So that's super interesting, right? This is virtual and globalization. Reality. And uh, this is something that we are so much more used to than when this was first uh, shown in TV. This looks like this was in TV. In what year do you think this was? Were you able to gather some information on the video? Do you want to watch it again? And then we can discuss it. Yes, teacher, again, please. <laughs> All righty, no problem. I know that some people just joined, uh, so we can go ahead and watch it again, and then we can continue with the discussion. Um, I know that Bonnie has her hand up, so, uh, Let's just go ahead, watch the video again for the people that just joined and also for us to understand it better. And then we can start the discussion and we'll start with Bonnie. All righty. Here we yes, go again. Sister, play again, please. Absolutely. Here we go again. To finish this course, we want you to sit, relax, and watch the last video with us. Feel free to take notes as you watch it. Finally from us, the virtual office. For better or worse, technology and globalization are creating startling changes in what it means to be on the job. Betsy Stark is tracking the new order of business and tonight begins our series, The Future of Work. Imagine a work world with no commute, no corporate headquarters, maybe no office in the physical world at all. For Bob Flavin, Janet Hoffman, and Joseph Jaffe, the future is already here. These days we do so much stuff by teleconferences and things um, that it doesn't matter where you are. Like 42% of IBM's 350,000 employees, Bob Flavin rarely comes into an IBM office. We don't care where and how you get your work done. We care that you get your work done. On the day we met him, he was collaborating with computer scientists in British Columbia and Beijing from the on-call room of his local ambulance corps, where he works as a volunteer. You are in 6031. The workforce at the Accenture management consulting firm is so mobile, not even the CEO has an office with his name on the door. There's no corporate headquarters. No. If you need a workspace, you reserve it like a hotel room, checking in and out at a kiosk. Having a big desk is a sign of status with lots of family photos and, uh, you know, and, and carpeting that's...
fluffy and nice is uh, that is is a vision of the past. Come on into the theater. In the future, more companies with scattered workforces and clients may do what the crayon marketing firm has done and make their headquarters in cyberspace. Here's our little rooftop. We had our holiday party here. Crayon's workers rarely meet in the physical world. I am uh, in Boston today. And I am on Long Island today. But their alter egos in the virtual world gather once a week. We're here in, uh, in our boardroom, and uh, you're here actually at the tail end of a status meeting. I never met Crayon's CEO in person. There you are. But we spent a couple of hours together in cyberspace. Our belief is that if we bring like minds together, no matter where they are in the world, we can actually create that connectedness as if we're actually here at the same place at the same time. If what matters is what you do, not where you are, who needs an office? Betsy Stark, ABC News, Crayonville in cyberspace. And tomorrow, imagine having summers off every summer. That is World News for this Monday. I'm Kate Snow. For Charles Gibson and all of us at ABC News, have a good evening. Good night. All right. We are back. We just watched this video again about virtual reality, how companies like IBM work remotely. And this was a huge thing before the pandemic, right? Because while COVID hit, we all had to learn how to work remotely, how to work from home, um, or even from a different city if we were at a different place at that time. So um, I see a question in the chat. I see Bunny asks, what is tracking? So what were they talking about when they used the word tracking? What is the context? Tracking the new world, and I think that it's like changing, but I'm not sure. Tracking the new what? I'm sorry. The new order. Oh, at the okay. beginning. Okay. Tracking the new order. I'm just writing uh, it yes. on the chat. Let me put it here in the screen as well. Tracking the new order. All right. So when we're talking about shipments or products does someone know what tracking is does anybody know what tracking a product or tracking an order is has it happened its course. i'm sorry follow its course nice that's a good definition what I heard another definition. So has it ever happened to you that you order something online from a store like Amazon or AliExpress? I know not everyone has ordered, but when you order something, it tells you the tracking of your product. So it tells you when it's been shipped, when it was sent, when it's going to arrive, that's tracking. So when you are tracking an order, it's telling, it's exactly, it's following its course, it's following its path, its trajectory of where it's going to go from point A to point B, and it follows the course, exactly. Does that help, Bunny? Yes, thank you. Awesome. All righty. What other questions do we have? Do you have? Did you know about virtual reality? Did you know about IBM? Do you know what IBM is, the company? Does anybody know yes. what IBM does? I don't know, teacher. Yes. Who knows? What is it? What is IBM? A ABM uh, is a company that uh, researched and uh, news computers or technology informatics. I remember uh, IBM uh, manufacturing uh, 
computers and and I say only computers, the big computers. Big computers, right? They were the first ones to produce the modern computer because they were bigger computers, right? Like from the initial, um, the initial, the first computer that existed um, from the World War II. They and were mainframe. They were what? Mainframe was the name of the computer that were very uh, large or... Is that big. the name? Mainframe? Yes. Hey, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Let's look for that. Mainframe, like this computer. It was a, it's, what's a server, I don't know. What was the, 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 function, the function of that uh, kind of computer, but they were big. Oh, this one's like servers. Um, yes. Mainframe. I remember the IBA computers with a, uh, was a big box, <laughs> big box, yeah. uh, color white, and the monitor. Like monitor. this one. Yes, mm, yes. IBA, yes. <laughs> but they it. were after the, the, the biggest one. <laughs> yes. yes, that's right. Thank you so much, Francisco and Maritza. That's right. I didn't know about the mainframe. That's super interesting. Um, so yes, IBM was and is it still is a technology company. Um, I believe that they um, focus right now more on servers, like the one Maritza was talking about. They still do some computers, like this ones that are a little bit more modern, um, but they uh, do a lot of office equipment and then very, very advanced servers. So their main technology is not our house computers, but computers for big enterprises or big servers for big enterprises. So that's super interesting. What other questions or comments uh, do you have about the video that you found interesting yeah, or maybe you something know, I mean, you don't know? I think the video um, was uh, edit, edit um, 20 years ago. And in this moment, the people uh, uh, was uh, thought, uh, sorry, uh, thought the future when I like um, uh, virtual meetings, uh, but they don't. Uh, they didn't, um, the pandemic accelerate the virtual meetings. <laughs> yeah. You understand me? Yeah, and, <laughs> and we thought it, that it would accelerate it, right? Because it's fast, the pandemic accelerates the, the virtual uh, meetings and the virtual education. Uh, right now, it's a... Uh, is commonly the uh, meetings and and classes, uh, for example, we <laughs> exactly yeah. we, we are uh, receive uh, virtual classes, and the technology the the technology is uh, advanced and. Right now, it's, uh, it's not a possibility, it's reality. Exactly. I, I really like that. Yeah, it's not a possibility. It's our every day. It's our reality. And yeah, the pandemic, we had to make it work. Like there was no other option. You had to learn how to get classes online, how to work from home. Some people liked it. Some people didn't like it. I personally like to go to the office. Some people prefer to stay home. Um, but this class is, right, like Francisco was saying, it is so much easier for you to have this class at home right now at 8 p.m. than having to go somewhere at 8 p.m. to receive a class after a long day of work, right? 
So yeah, we've come a long way and technology is today and it is still advancing. So look at this, for example. They show this virtual reality that we thought, hey, this is not accurate. This is not what we do. But in reality, people are doing this. Did you see what Facebook wanted to do about Meta, their new business? Yes, Meta. It's a Mark Zuckerberg business. Yep, that's right. And he is trying to do that exact thing. So they want to emulate, emular, simular, right? Mm -hmm. Human interaction in a virtual setting, which if you ask me, this feels kind of weird, but I feel like all things feel weird when they're new. Um, so this is like the improved version of this. So it is happening. It will happen. It is already happening. In Meta, we need to uh, create an avatar or... Uh, yeah, you, or... Create, you create your own avatar avatar so it's exactly the same thing as facebook but you use virtual reality um, glasses and instead of scrolling on your phone you kind of walk in a room in virtual reality and click on posts and see posts and read the articles but you are in virtual reality interesting yeah it's interesting it's kind of still hard for us to understand, I think, is I've never done that. Have you ever done that? Mm, no. No, never. Yeah, no, me either. Never. But maybe we will have the chance. Suppose we need a pay a cost for use the meter. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, well how, how many? <laughs> I don't think you have to pay to use Meta, um, but just the fact that you need one of these, these are expensive. So I think you don't need to pay Meta, like you don't need to pay for Facebook, but you need to have a cell phone, right? So years ago, it was like social media existed, but not everyone, could afford to pay for a cell phone, to pay for data, to pay for a smartphone specifically. So I think this is kind of like it. You don't need to pay for Meta, but this is expensive. So not, not, not everyone will be able to join at the beginning. So uh, we need a new gadget, expensive yep. gadget. And suppose I need um, a better connection because Meta oh, yeah. used uh, a, a fifth generation uh, web uh, 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 Wi-Fi, it's uh, more quality. No, more, I, I think my telephone is not, uh, it's not prepared. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Technology is, Mine uh... either. We're not ready. <laughs> yeah. We're not ready. Yeah, we still need to get some. Uh, I think we haven't even gotten 5G yet with no company, but maybe it'll happen this year. I don't know. So, yeah, but that's the future. I mean, we are getting there just not this week and not this month, but it is happening. All righty. That was a great conversation. We are also going to be continuing the discussion on history. And then for everyone that joined a little bit late, that joined um, after we reviewed the agenda, after we watch this video about history and we watch our lesson um, on how to implement this vocabulary, we are also going to do a reading exercise. So, Let's continue with our next section. Join us in the last section of this course. We want you to answer the following questions. Number one, do you know when World War I began? How do you know when World War I began? 
Who knows? I know. <laughs> when? What year? 1914. 1914. Is he right? 1914 began. Uh, from 1914 to 1917. To 1917. All right. And is he right? Is Francisco right, guys? Yes. Yes. Nice. So, yeah. No, no, 1918. No? 1918? I think that is 1918. All right. Who says 1914? Who says 1918? What does everyone else think? 1914. Let's review. That's why we're here. So let's see. 1914. Francisco's right. You guys are right. It started in 1914. 1914 began. It began, yeah, and it yes, lasted. and finished in 1918. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, I yes, thought you were saying right. that it, Yep. I thought you were saying that it started in 1918. Yep. That's right. The Great War. Alrighty. Next question. The United Nations. How long has the United Nations been in existence? Existence. The UN. Or la Organización de las Naciones Unidas. Mm -hmm. How long has that existed? When was that created? There is a key. 1705, maybe? Since, uh, uh, since uh, 1945. All right, all right. Since 1945. Who else has an opinion? Mm -hmm. When do you think that it was created? Yes, Does agree. It... Agree? Does everyone yeah. agree? Mm -hmm. 1945, because it's the um, end of the Second War. The end of the Second World War, right? October 24th, 1945. Mm -hmm. So when the World War II ended and they brought down the Berlin Wall and all of that happened, they created the United Nations, and so it began. Then we go into the Cold War. The, I feel like the war didn't really end, but that's a different topic. Yeah. Yep. All right. And finally, how long were the Beatles together for? All of them. Um, 15 years. 15 years? 10. 10 years? Yeah. I think that 10 years. 10 years? 10 Let's years. Search. Let's search because I don't know, honestly. This one, I don't know. How long were the Beatles together? 1960 to 1970. So it says that uh, they were together since 1962. So yeah, let's give it 10 years, eight, 10 years. Let's eight, round it. Eight years. Yeah. Eight years. Nice, the Fab Four. How many of them are left? Just one or two? That are still alive? I think that two. Two, right? Yes. Nice. All right. Nations been in existence. How long were the Beatles together for? If you really know the answers, type them in. I'm good at history. Part A. Listen and practice. Look, here's a quiz on events of the 20th century. Oh, let me give it a try. I'm good at history. All right. First question. When did World War I begin? I think it began in 1917. Huh. And how long has the United Nations been in existence? Uh, since Kennedy became president in 1961. Hmm. Next question. How long were the Beatles together? Well, they started in 1965 and broke up in 1980, so they were together for 15 years. So, how am I doing so far? Not very well. Not one of your answers is correct. 
All right, so he didn't get one of them. He was wrong all the way. So what about this conversation? Does anyone have any questions about the vocabulary in this conversation? He mistake the all answer. Yeah. He made a mistake on all of them. They're incorrect. So this is interesting, right? The 20th century. Important that when we're talking about centuries, the 20th century, the 19th century. Right? Anyone have any questions on this vocabulary or reading? Sure, I have a question. Yes. Um, what's the meaning or of um, how am I doing so far? It's a new expression for me. That's perfect. Let's see, let's see. How am I doing so far? Como voy hasta ahorita? Como voy hasta aquí? How am I doing so far? Oh, thank you. Excellent question. Any other questions, observations, comments? Oops. Alrighty, I think this is vocabulary that you know, and I do want us to practice. I do want us to do a reading exercise, but I want to do it a little bit harder. I know this is vocabulary that you know. We talked about it a little bit ago, so we are going to move into our um, reading about the Homo sapiens, which is our race and an early human migration and i will we will begin here and, i'm sorry one second All right, and as we were discussing, sorry about the noise, that's okay, I'm back. And we're going to choose from the participants. I see that we are 18 people right now. We are 18 people. And each of us is going to read a section. So let's start in order here. If you can please help us, please, Alexander. If you're here. Hello. Hello. Hi, Alexander. Can hey, you how sweep? are you? I'm so sorry. No I worries. No problem. Uh, are you okay to read? Can you help us read or would you yes. rather re read later? Okay. No, no, yes, right now. Perfect. Tell me, where? How this, section, this section right here, the section highlighted. Okay. okay, where do we begin? Before we tell the stories that make up world history, it is useful to ask, where do we begin? Where did our human story start? Perfect. Thank you so much, Alexander. Okay. All right. Let's do the next section. Please, until here. Um, let's see. This section right here, please, Bunny. Homo sapiens is part of a group called Omid, like, um, I don't know how to pronounce, Omid, which were the earliest human-like creators based on archaeological and anthropological evidence. Perfect. Thank you so much, Bunny. So you see that 
this rating has some more difficult words because they are kind of scientific words and maybe a little bit uh, more complicated, but we will learn how to pronounce them. That's okay. You, we haven't studied this before, so we will learn how to say it. This right here, Homo mm -hmm. sapiens, is that's how it's pronounced, Homo sapiens. Okay, Homo sapiens. That's right. And Homo sapiens is a part of a group called hominids. Oh. Hominids. Hominids. Remember, hominids. we pronounce the H in English. So in English, so mm. Homo sapiens, hominids. Esto en español, ya sabemos, homo, homo sapiens es el mismo, hominidos o hominids, en, se les dice en español, so hominids, it's just, um, so homo sapiens is the um, species, and then the hominids is a group of similar species, es un grupo de especies similares, right, so, hominids, it, which were the earliest human-like creatures based on archaeological and anthropological evidence. That was awesome. Uh, these are also difficult words, so congratulations to Bonnie on that. Let's continue with this. Thank you. Let's continue right here until Africa with Amilcar, please. Amilcar or yes, are you here? I can't hear you. Amilcar, hello. <laughs> All right. Maybe he's having issues with his microphone, but can you help us, Anna, please, Pineda? Alexander, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, I'm here, teacher. Thank I can you. Hear you. Yes, we can hear you now. No le podíamos escuchar. Can you please help us read that section? Because I was pushed the, the microphone. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, can you tell me, teacher, again? Yes. This section right here, the one in red, can you help us read it? The one in okay. the screen, please. Okay. Uh, that I read, it, right? Yes, please. What's it, it, what's it in the square? Okay. We think that hominids diverge from other primates. Primate is okay? Yes. Okay. Somewhere between 2.5 and 1 million years ago in Eastern and Southern Africa. That's right. Thank you so much, America. So let's review. We think that hominids diverged, derivaron, right? Derivaron from other primates somewhere between 2.5 and 4 million years ago in Eastern and Southern Africa. I am going um, ahead and just checking the words that I think are most difficult. But if you want to know a different word that I didn't mention, please let me know and we can stop and review the word. Okay. All right. You just let me know the word you want to review. All right. Let's continue with this last section, please. This we already did. Please, let's see, Ana Pineda. Are you there? I think I saw her on mute earlier, so I think she's there. All right. Yes, I'm here. Awesome, can you help us please? Okay, the, there was a degree of diversity among the home Homini may family, they are shared and trait of 
by P. Dunstein, I don't know, or the ability to walk upright on two legs. That's great. Thank you so much, Anna. That was a very, very close pronunciation. Very, very good. This word is pronounced bipedalism. 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 It means that you can walk on two limbs, right? Or two legs instead of your four limbs. Limbs. <laughs> and what is trait? Share trait. Trait. They share the trait que compartían la característica o compartían la um, cualidad. The trait uh, of bipedalism. So bipedalism, you can walk with two limbs or two legs, right? Bipedalism. Awesome. There was a degree of diversity among the hominid family, but they are where bipedal they all were uh, they all walked on two legs okay let's continue oops let's scroll here we're moving on to the evolution part let's read this whole thing please francisco Okay. Um, scientists have several theories about why early hominids evolved. One, the aridity hypothesis, mm -hmm. suggests that early hominids were more suited to dry climates and then evolved as the Africa's dry savanna regions expand. Thank you so much, Francisco. That was great. So let's do a reading. Uh, let's do the readout. Scientists have several theories about why early hominids evolved, right? So those hominids evolved into being the Homo sapiens. One of the aridity, uh, I'm sorry, one, the aridity or aridity hypothesis de la, uh, de la aridad, de la sequía right, mm -hmm. suggests that early hominids were more suited, en esta palabra suited. casi que no pronunciamos la I, we can ignore it, so okay. it sounds like suited, right, suited, were more suited to dry climates and evolved as the Africans dry savanna regions expanded, all right, okay, thank you, awesome, suited, suited, that's right, Suited. Exactly. Let's continue, please, here. So sorry, Alex, yes. Alejandra. Yes. Aridity? What means aridity? Sequía, aridity? sequedad. Ah, okay. Aridad. Es, es un clima árido. Okay. Awesome. Let's please continue with this section, Ivania. According to the Savannah hypothesis, Early tree drilling hominids may have been pushed out of their home as environmental environmental change caused the forest region to shrink and the size of the savanna expand. Thank you, Ivana. You have really, really great fluidity. That's great. All righty. So let's review the words here and their pronunciation. So let's say, according to the Savannah hypothesis, this word is pronounced hypothesis. Hypothesis. Early tree dwelling hominids. So los hominids que andaban en los árboles todavía, tree dwelling hominids may have been pushed out of their homes as environmental changes caused the forest regions to shrink, shrink, make smaller, become smaller. One second. To shrink. Oh. 
So um, that caused the forest regions to shrink, to become smaller, right? Encogerse. And the size of the savanna expand. So the forest shrinked, they became smaller, and the savanna, so big spaces of dry land, expanded. So the early hominids had to get off the tree uh, to adapt to these changes. Any questions right here? Alrighty, let's continue. Let's continue practicing here. So let's continue with these changes, please, Javier. These changes, according to the Savanna hypo hypothesis, hypothesis, may have hypothesis may have caused them to adapt to living on the ground and working all, how do you say, upright. Upright, yes. Upright instead of climbing. Thank you so much, Javier. That's right. These changes, according to the Savannah hypothesis, may have caused them, may have caused them to adapt to living on the ground and walking upright instead of climbing walking on two limbs instead of climbing with all of them. Let's continue. Please, Juan Jose here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. <clears throat> Until simple tools. Okay. How many continue to involve and develop unique characteristic? characteristic. They bring capacity increase and in approximately 2.3 million years ago. Uh, how many did know has uh, home habits began to make and use simple tools? Thank you so much, Han Juan Jose. Thank you. All right. Hominids continued to evolve and develop unique characteristics. This word is pronounced characteristics. Characteristics, <clears throat> right? Okay unique characteristics. Their brain, uh, their brain capacities increased, they had more capacities, and approximately 2.3 million years ago, a hominid known as Homo habilis, ¿Por qué en esta nota dice? Porque it's Latin, okay, it's, it's Latin, so Homo habilis began to make and use simple tools. So Homo habilis was the one that started to use um, their version of a hammer and all of that. Let's see the chat. Thank you for answering on the chat. Yes, that's right. Upright means that they walk in two legs and they walk in a vertical line. That's awesome that you are helping yourselves. Let's continue. Let's see, let's continue right here with this part, please. Katia. By a million years ago, some hominid species particularly home erectus, began to migrate out of Africa and into Eurasia, where they began to make other advances like controlling fire. Thank you so much, Katia. That was great. So by a million years ago, hace un millón de años, <laughs> some hominid species, particularly the Homo erectus, began to migrate. This word is pronounced migrate, and that's what it means, migrat, right? began to migrate out of Africa and into Eurasia. So before the continents completed uh, their separation, you know that a long time ago, millions of years ago, we had one single continent, right? So we had wow. Eurasia. Um, and then uh, they moved into Af uh, out of African Eurasia 
and they began to make other advances like control fire. They made um, fireplaces, what we know today to make marshmallows and all of that, but they used it to cook their food. All right, that's interesting, right? Yes. Any questions so far? No. Cool. There are some pictures, some references. Let's continue. Let's do this section right here, please. Leymar. Though there were one many kinds of hominids, only one remains homo sapiens. Extinctions is a normal part of evolution and scientists continue to theorize the why other hominid species didn't survive. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Lamar. That was excellent. So though there were once many kinds of hominids, only one remains, homo sapiens, us, right? Extinction is a normal part of evolution and scientists continue to theorize why other hominid species didn't survive. That's great. They are still trying to figure it out. Right. Let's continue, please, Marcy. We do have some clues as to why some species were less successful at surviving than others, such as an inability to cope with competition for food, changes in climate, and Thank you so much, Marza. Thank you. All right. So we do have some clues, some ideas, right? Some, some tips um, as to why some species were less successful at surviving than others, such as an inability to cope with competition for food. So maybe we were better at hunting, um, changes in climate, and volcanic eruption. So maybe it just so happened that where the Homo erectus lived, um, they were not able to survive a volcanic eruption, right? How do you say climate? Climate. 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 That's right. So kind of like climate, kind of like this climate. Uh, climate. Nice question. Any other questions? So far? No, it's okay. Cool. Let's continue. What does it mean cope? Cope to be able to stand. So I need to cope with my stress to finish the day. I need to cope with competition so that I can survive to, um, let's see, what's the synonym for it? To to stand, to withhold, aguantar, o sostener. Soportar también. All right, how and why? We're moving into migration and the peopling of the earth. Peopling, la, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. como se llena de, de gente, la tierra, right? And this word comes from people. So the peopling of the earth. Sure. Yes. Uh, I have a doubt. Yes. Um, when I have to use climate and, and when I have to use weather. Oh, good question. Climate. Climate weather. So, esto es una pregunta como en español que nos hacemos de la diferencia entre el clima y la temperatura, right? O el clima y el tiempo. 
So climate is, uh, it can be either regional or wor uh, worldwide, but the point is it's that it's bigger scale. It's bigger in scale. Uh -huh. It's a permanent characteristic yep. of the atmospheric region. Yep. <laughs> so it changes within time, but we're talking about millions or thousands or maybe hundreds of years um, if it's not as severe, right? And then the weather, um, you have weather seasons. So you have summer, winter, mm -hmm. spring. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you can have a day with bad weather because it's raining a lot, but the climate, we call this a uh, part of the world, like our country, that we have a tropical climate. Because yeah. even in the winter, it'll be hot, right? Or humid. So that's the difference. Climate, it's bigger scale. And weather, it can be one week to another. And it's talking mostly about temperatures or precipitation and all of that. Thank you. Yep, yep, yep. We like science here. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. That was an excellent question, by the way. That's a question we even ask in Spanish, right? Like it's it's kind of mm -hmm. useful to, to yes, explain. The same. Yep. Mm -hmm. I remember learning about that. Alrighty. Let's please continue. Let's see, Marvin, please. Between 70,000 and 100,000 years ago, Homo sapiens began to migrate from the African continent, continent in populating part of uh, Europe and Asia. Thank you so much, Marvin. That's right. So the Homo sapiens began migrating from the African continent and into other parts of Europe and Asia, populating other parts of other country, other continents. All right, now Maritza, please do the following section. They reached the Australian continent in canoes, mm -hmm. sometimes between, uh, sometimes between uh, 30, 35,000 and 65,000 years ago. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Maritza. They reached the Australian continent, or Oceania, como lo conocemos, right? In canoes. That's exactly what you think it means? Canoas, right? Canoes. Sometime between 35,000 or 65,000 years ago. So a long time ago. So at this point, we had enough tools and enough uh, materials and we had enough ideas, which is very important, to make these canoes. Like we had to build them. So that way we were able to move across seas. Cool. And let's do, I think this is going to be the last one that we do because of the time, but let's continue, please, with Mirna. Mirna, if you're here with us, or we can do Natalie. Can I? Hi. Who was that? Hello, Mirna, Natalie. Hello. Mirna, Natalie, Rigoberta. Okay, here we go. Hello. Hi, please go ahead. Okay. Scientists study the masses and climate. Climate. Now that the place stones, I don't know how to pronounce it. Pleistocene. Pleistocene. Ice age created a land right that connected uh, Asia and North America, Alaska, over 13,000 years ago. Thank you so much, Natalie. 
That's right. So scientists studying land masses and climate know that the Pleistocene Ice Age created a land bridge. Que ese es el, eh, ¿Cómo se le dice en español? Where, where we got, were able to get to America. El, oh my God, I want to remember. Mm -hmm. Where? Es que no es la palabra, es el nombre de él. Which one? Um, esa sección en donde se conectó Europa con. Um, ay. Oh my God, please help me with that. Uh, the Ben. Estrecho? El estrecho? El That's estrecho. Right. Yeah, That's right. You see, North you knew America. it. You, you knew it, you got it, you knew it. <laughs> that's right, yep. So that's the one they're referring to. It is 9 p.m., guys. Okay. We will continue with our reading tomorrow and we will continue talking about the past tenses. Past perfect, past continuous. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.